The US military has officially retaliated due to attacks they have received on Al-Assad Air Base that left four US military personnel with TBI, traumatic brain injury, which on the outside looks like nothing, but on the inside will affect you for the rest of your life. Now, these retaliations indicate a very big change in US military strategy in Iraq. If you've been following my channel, and you can go ahead and check out some videos on it, the country of Iraq the Prime Minister and the majority of the government is done with the US military in Iraq. They want them out. But according to the Pentagon, they have heard nothing and there's been no formal agreements or disagreements given to the Pentagon to get the heck out of Iraq. Now, again, this is super significant for the US military to be confident and deem appropriate to go after these Iranian-backed militants. Now, this is the pattern throughout the Middle East. Again, I've been reporting all over the Middle East, specifically in Iraq and in Yemen, where the United States is playing the game of the ball is in your court, now the ball is in our court, who's going to strike back? The country of Iran themselves, they have shown to now be even more aggressive themselves, publicly coming out and stating that we are the ones doing the attacks. We're behind these attacks and we're going to support who we support to end the West in the Middle East, to end the U.S. military in Iraq, and to eventually go after Israel. Now... As far as in Iraq, again, it's very hard to get accurate public information as to what exactly is going on. The main reason why the United States is currently in Iraq via the Pentagon and via the mission statement is to not allow for the destabilization of Iraq and to never allow IS to overrun, uh, overrun Iraq. That is why we are there. We are not there to fight Iran or to fight Iranian-backed militant groups. These headlines are happening day in and day out. And that is a major cause uh, for concern uh, for the Prime Minister of Iraq. Again, this was never the mission statement, and we know why this is happening. The Prime Minister of Iraq has even indicated that we need to be regional partners with Iran, and the U.S. military's 2,500 personnel in our country, they're doing nothing to help our country. All of these U.S. military personnel in our country are doing is just causing more strife between the two nations of Iran and Iraq, and it is becoming worse and worse and worse. Now, we do know why there is a direct attack on U.S. military personnel in Iraq. This is because, again, Iran needs to delegitimize the United States' presence in the Middle East. They need to make it clear that there is zero reason for the United States to be in the Middle East. And again, as long as the U.S. military is out of the Middle East, this will give a direct path to Iran's number one true enemy, which is Israel. So the question begs, what exactly is going on behind the scenes between the U.S. military and Iraq? Does Iraq want Iran or do they want the U.S. military in the region? The silver lining for the United States, and I've talked about this before in previous videos, is that Iran and Iraq, although they are allies and although currently it looks like they're heading towards peace and working together for regional stability, Iran has attacked the sovereign territory of Erbil, Iraq, the city of Erbil, Iraq. And this really did not fester well with the country of Iraq and their government. Asking Iran, we are friends, but why are you uh, conducting strikes on our country? I thought we were friends, and I thought we were trying to restabilize the region. Now, look, at the end of the day, we all know that the U.S. military will probably never leave Iraq. Like, you're going to have to force them out of that country, because the second the United States leaves Iraq, a lot of things will collapse because of this, and that's for a whole nother video. But ultimately speaking, the war in Israel heavily relies on this um, U.S. military presence in the Middle East. The, the goal for the U.S. military 100% right now is to not allow for any country to attack Israel. They want Israel to be one-on-one -on -one Hamas versus Israel. And the number one ally to Israel right now is, of course, the United States. So, if the United States is going to be the number one backer to Israel, Iran says, well, we'll just go after the United States. Whether through the country of Iraq, whether through the country of Yemen, that is why I keep reporting on it and everyone else keeps reporting on Iranian-backed militants. Iranian-backed militants have attacked the U.S. or the U.S. attacks Iranian-backed militants. This is going to be the narrative in the Middle East unless an actual formal war breaks out between Iran and the United States, which will probably never happen. But again, 
Look at the strategy for Iran. They are very confident right now. It's been a long time coming where the country of Iran has formally stated, we are in all of the countries that you don't want us in. We are in Syria, we are in Yemen, and we are definitely in Iraq. And to make things even worse for the United States and the West, who wants the United States to stay in Iraq, is that right now, this regime who is running Iraq, the Prime Minister, they are backed by a, a lot of Iranian influences. So it does look like this current Iraq is moving in the direction to team up with Iran. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but that is what the prime minister is saying. On public interviews on CNN, on public interviews with Reuters, Al Jazeera, and to this day, at the time of making this video, the Pentagon is saying, we don't know what the hell anyone is talking about. Go to the State Department. So ultimately, speaking, does the U.S. military have the right to defend themselves? Well, yes. At the end of the day, the U.S. military is always going to defend themselves. Whether in Niger, Africa, whether in Syria, whether down in the Red Sea in Yemen, but especially in Iraq. But again, the issue is this, since combat operations are technically done back in 2021, where is that line where combat operations for the United States are actually reaching into the zone of what they're not allowed to do? Is it a combat operation if you know that the guy attacked you is in Baghdad, or is that a defensive operation? And this is where the US military is uh, begging the argument, we are merely defending ourselves. And to be fair, look, I'm trying to be right down the middle, the U.S. military did wait like 70 attacks in where, again, they were getting attacked almost every single day since October 7th. The U.S. military decided to launch an AC-130J Ghost Rider, and this stirred an uproar in the Middle East. How could the United States go out, launch an attack over Iraq when they're not supposed to do this? Now, as far as like the U.S. ever launching attacks in Yemen or Syria, it always gets brushed under the rug because those countries have like a million different factions fighting for a million different reasons. You don't even have to be an enemy of the United States. Some enemies of the United States actually share the same enemy with Iran. Like, it's a really confusing thing. But as far as Iraq goes, the number one enemy for the United States are these Iranian-backed militant groups. Even though the U.S. is in Iraq to fight IS in Iran, they are enemies with IS. You see how things are rather confusing right now. So where do we go from here? Well, this is going to keep happening. Again, I keep saying this over and over, and I hate making the thumbnail and the titles of these videos, United States military attacks Iranian-backed mil uh, militant groups or militias. So we will see what happens. Ultimately speaking, the ball is now back in Iran's court. Iran knows that they have a lot of momentum in their favor. They know that this is not going to last forever where the country of Iraq is now buddy buddies with Iran. And Iran also knows that the US military has their absolute hands tied behind their back. They are pinned into a corner. The US military is damned if they do or damned if they don't. Damned if they do, if they go after targets in Baghdad, even though they're attacking the organizers of prior attacks on US military bases, it doesn't matter. You struck in a civilian populated area. You're not supposed to do that, US military. And they're damned if they don't, because ultimately speaking, eventually, statistically speaking, U.S. military members are going to get more than just traumatic brain injury. That is the best case scenario right now for the U.S. military. But we all know eventually, and if this does happen, I don't know what the retaliation is going to be. If the U.S. military actually takes a loss in personnel, it is going to be a very big deal for the United States. What is Joe Biden going to do? Because I don't think most people understand why we're even in Iraq. Even for myself, studying and researching all of this, I really have to dig deep into why we are there, which is again, to fight IS and to never allow them to ever take over Iraq again. But now are we here to fend off Iran or are we here to defend ourselves? Because if one person gets taken out out of the 2,500 US personnel in Iraq, this could be means for war if it was deemed that the militant who did the attack was backed by Iran. So we will see what happens. This is the story, but things are getting really serious. Central Command or CENTICOM has a lot on their table, and it looks like they're trying to deal with Iranian-backed militants all over the Middle East from Yemen to Iraq to Syria and a little bit of Lebanon. But the United States... This is their mission. Keep them away from Israel and we will take the strikes and we will fight back.